We're going back to Guyana and Suriname, featuring the Crab Dagu Discovery. Today's episode is sponsored by Apex Tubulars. This is the second video on this region. Our previous one featured the Kawa Wan Discovery. Today, we're going to feature Crab Dagu, which is a discovery approximately in this location here in Block 58 over in Suriname. We're also going to have a look at the FPSO developments, really the, the first developments that there have been in the entire Guyana, Suriname, French Guiana region. Then we're going to move on and take a more detailed look at Exxon Mobil's plans for this year and then look and mention uh, the plans that are going on in the uh, Block 42. We saw this slide in the last video and it looks at the depositional systems. What we're finding is that as we move out into the deep water regions, exploration has moved into this, into the uh, sort of these distal turbidite, these slope fans and basin floor fans of uh, many sort of Cretaceous age. And uh, today we're going to look at uh, another example of, th this is the sort of the Block 58, here's the Maastrichtian Campanian in Starbrook, and uh, more into the sort of Campanian Santonian in Block 58. So that's down to the southeast into Suriname. Well, three weeks ago, this was uh, the list that we put up, but uh, since then there's been another discovery and uh, we can just have a look at that here. Crab Dagu. On this graph here, which is a plot of the meters of pay, which is, is shown as the maximum recorded on any of the assets, uh, you can see the subject of the video three weeks ago, Kawa is sitting in here, and the latest discovery, Crab Dagu, has got a significant amount of pay. It's interesting to look back through time and uh, and see that it was 2011 that uh, Zadeus here found a significant thickness of pay. And of course, this region was really kicked off with the discovery by ExxonMobil of Lisa back in 2015. So there was a comment on the Namibia video. Somebody was asking, you know, could we compare Namibia with Guyana Suriname? Well, maybe not quite now, but uh, here we are at 2022. If we go back 10 years to 2012, uh, we can see that uh, perhaps Namibia, with its, its initial discoveries at both Graph 1 by Shell, and Venus One by Total Energies may really be at the start of something that we've seen in Guyana and Suriname. So here is Crab Dagu. It's essentially the most easterly in Block 58, and is actually an extension of this trend and these uh, these other recent discoveries that have been made. Now, I'll just add that uh, we're not showing all of the fields. They're not all labelled here, but they are in our, our trove product. So the announcement, Total Energies, the operator with Patchy as a partner, have drilled this well in uh, 780 metres uh, water depth uh, with the Maersk Valiant drill ship. Drilled down to 5,273 metres, uh, it found 90 metres of uh, net oil pay in, in good quality sandstones within the Maastrichtian and Campanian. There'll be a DST, I think, on both of these intervals just to double check the quality of the crude and the deliverability from these sands. It's the most easterly extent of the fairway, notwithstanding Zadeus, which is quite a long way over in, in French Guinea, so I don't think the extent of its play is quite yet defined. So let's have a look at the ExxonMobil Starbrook block, the 2022 plan. The plan is to drill eight exploration wells and four appraisal wells. You can see that Lucanani is expected to spud in this year using the uh, noble Tom Madden drill ship, followed, or I'm not entirely sure what the sequence is because I think there's more than one rig involved involved in here but you've got barrel eye top and patwa and four other wells that as yet to be identified I'm, I'm sure they're just getting high graded and the preferred sequence worked out by that partnership appraisal wells well tilapia there's going to be a, a second well on, on that structure and three further appraisal wells We've got DSTs expected on Tilapia 1 and Pinktail 1. That's the, the ages of the discoveries in brackets there. And then if we look at Suriname, well, Cosmos Energy operate with Hess and Chevron as partners. And the plan is that Zanderidge is due to spud in 2022. There was a previous well on the block in 2018, but it failed to detect hydrocarbons. The target is Santonian aged sandstones. Now, this is something that uh, comes from Hess. Uh, Hess, I think, are great because they keep all the stakeholders informed. 
And this is a, just an extract from the budget that uh, they're expecting to spend this year. And these are Hess's share of all these various spends in millions of dollars. And you can see that as you look at those numbers, I mean, there's a huge amount of investment across this region. And some of it is in the developments and a lot of it is going into feed, which is front end engineering design, and also for further exploration drilling in the block. So huge numbers. We're reaching out to the seismic companies. What we'd like to do in a future episode is actually look at the seismic availability, the extent. And we'd like to do this regionally and as an independent view of what there is. So you can see here, top left, this is uh, one company's availability and spread of data in the region. Um, there is a lot more. This is uh, for Suriname, and this here is for French Guiana. And as well as that, uh, we know that, you know, there's... PGS, CGG, Polarcus, and Western GECO have all got surveys in this region. So, you know, we obtain our information from public source data. We would like to show the extent and example lines. We prefer if there's actually a discovery highlighted on there, even if it's projected, so that we can give people a sense of what these fields look like. We understand that, you know, where companies going to shoot in future is sometimes uh, commercially sensitive. We want to turn our attention now to the production facilities and have a quick look. Um, this is the Starbrook block again, and there are two FPSOs on station. The top one here, Destiny, is uh, on the Lisa field, and it started production back in 2019. Now, Unity has only just come on stream. In fact, it's probably still in commissioning now, but I think I saw that it was actually started production in February this year. And Unity is actually, uh, it's got about twice the capacity of Destiny. So it's a major step forward for the production of this field. The next one in the sequence is Prosperity. And, and Prosperity is currently in dry dock in Singapore. We understand it's uh, over 70% complete. And that's going to be heading to the Payara discovery. So it's described as the third development. Now, you can see that it is huge, this vessel, with over 220,000 barrels of oil production capacity and significant gas handling and water injection capability. First oil is anticipated to be uh, 2024 and early days yet, but Yellowtail is going to follow the Payara development and currently awaiting approvals from the regulators and of the environmental plan with a target to 2025 startup. So as this develops, uh, we'll keep revisiting what is happening in, in the region. I like this map. It's a little bit out of date now, but you can see that this was actually prepared by CGX Energy and their partners Frontera, who are in the uh, quarantine block, amongst others. And what I like about it is the fact that you can see just all these prospects highlighted in here. And, and this has probably been superseded. And I uh, look forward to seeing a, a, an up-to-date version of this. But you can see that there's been this play fairway. There's been a lot of success. But there are some significant outliers here. Joe... Carapa and Ranger up here and of course this play is, is moving further east so multiple prospects are being matured moving ahead with the FID decisions in block 58 um, and in Starbrook and you know in, in other blocks in and around the region so some of the drilling that's going to take place this year may extend that play fairway and of course this area most of the acreage if not all the acreage is already tied up so there really isn't quite the the, the need for sort of confidentiality that there has been in the past in, in other regions if we take a longer term view of the basin well it's expected that there's going to be six fpso's with combined production capacity of over a million barrels uh, as soon as 2027 so this is going to make Guyana and Suriname major players and major oil exporters continued exploration and growth there's going to be over 15 wells in 2022 we think there's, it's likely there could be more than that um, coming soon well we've got more news updates uh, I thought we might do a quick overview of this, the regional source rock and um, some of the issues there might take a look at the uh, Suriname shallow water bid round uh, using the uh, excellent work of the Envoy team. Um, have a look at country overviews and um, we're open to thoughts and ideas. If you put feedback and thoughts and ideas on what you'd like to see in the comments below, we'll try and get around to addressing those in future episodes.
If you want your project or asset information included in a future video, just send it through to us, giving us permission to use that information in our videos, and we'd be happy to include it. As usual, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell. You'll be notified when we come out with a new video. And if you want to get in touch, there's an email and a website address. Thank you very much.